Cardle with paperplusoffice.co.nz, your local office supplies specialist, now oh. open for business. On the Have List Monday evening, David Farrah from kiwiblog.co.nz. Hello, David. Good afternoon. And uh, Cameron Larry. Slater from whaleoil.co.nz and editor of The Truth. Hello, Cam. Hey, Larry. <laughs> David, uh, first to you, the Princess, uh, the Prince of uh, Wales, should I say, Charles, and the Duchess of Cornwall... Um, Camilla in the country for a brief visit. I think it's uh, just under a week. Some f- uh, focus has been on the hairdresser tagging along and the taxpayers paying for all of this. The visit will not be cheap. Uh, Papua New Guinea, I think, was near enough to $5 million for three days. What do you make of these visits? Do you support, uh, support these royal visits? I mean, the cost, that's just part of the deal, isn't it? Well, if you keep with the monarchy, it is part of the deal and you have to accept they come over from time to time. But I think really it just shows how ridiculous it is that we are part of the monarchy. We have a perfectly good Governor General, lovely uh, man who I think is widely respected. Um, we don't have to pay for a hairdresser to follow him about everywhere. Um, so, you know, effectively the Governor General is a head of state. We just have this sort of... Um, uh, attachment that uh, we haven't yet shaken. Right, and whether it's um, is it of any relevance to this country in 2012 uh, at all right now, what do you see in it, Cameron? Uh, well, you know, I'm a Republican, but I've, I've always said to David privately that I'll only support a republic when two people uh, have passed on. The first is Helen Clark and the second is <laughs> Bolger. And because both of them would want to line up and, and, and want to be the president. And, you know, you think that it's expensive paying for a hairdresser. I can tell you that having an office of a president would be a whole lot more expensive. Yeah, but if it wasn't Helen Clark or Jim Bulger, it would be somebody else, Cameron. There will be, always be somebody else coming along. You see, that's the thing, though, David, is not it? it becomes political. That's the problem. Yeah, my solution to that is if we move to Republic one day is you require not just a majority in Parliament, but what they call a super majority, say three quarters, which means that you won't get politicians because there has to be someone who would be acceptable to at least the two major parties. So I agree with Cam's worry about um, um, certain people becoming president, but I think you can look at other countries around the world and see that you can avoid that. I reckon we've got a cheap deal as it is. Paying for hairdressers is nothing. The more worrying thing is like the World Cup. Len Brown couldn't organise the trains. This time he couldn't organise the weather. Okay. Yeah, uh, I look at them and, look, I don't dislike the royals at all. I'm I'm more of a Republican, I think. But, you know, I look at uh, that lifestyle. Would you want that seriously? Would you want to have to do that, the smile and wave, the endless functions, the you've got to be polite? I think it's about oh, be a, a miserable On a personal level, they're existence. very hardworking, very dedicated to their job. Yeah. The Queen especially, you cannot criticise her performance. I think the, the debate is about what's best for New Zealand, which can be very different to uh, what's best for the United Kingdom. If we do have to have our own royal family, though, maybe Pippa Middleton could come down and become Queen. Oh. Uh, we'll come back in just a moment. David uh, Farrah, Cameron Slater. It's coming up 15 to 6. Larry Williams Drive with the business banking specialists at Westpac. Back on the huddle with David Farrah and Cameron Slater. Issue number two, Cameron. Pressure appears to be mounting on David Shearer ahead of the Labour Party's conference this weekend. Uh, looks like his days are numbered. What do you think? I think his days are numbered. My Labour sources have been uh, whispering for a a little while yet. I know David Shearer has uh, denied that he's had the delegation, for want of a better term, having a little chat about his future. Um, I know that that actually did happen. I know when that happened. Um, I, I, the only thing that, that's you know disappointing for me is that they don't seem to have the courage to actually want to get into the blood and guts, and they seem to be a bit squeamish, and they should just get on with it because politics is all about blood and guts, and uh, we want to see some. Right, they want him to step down uh, rather than quit yeah, I think yeah. to offer or be rolled. An yeah. easy way out. Um, something. Uh, what I've heard is an offer of of education uh, portfolio. Um, he was a former teacher himself, um, and, and he did that. I think David will probably correct me. I think he was an education spokesman at one stage. Um, it's a, a gracious way to exit. Um, but uh, it's very definitely there's, there's two factions that are angling. The thinking is is that uh, it, they've got to get, get them gone basically before the conference because after the conference the, uh, the membership uh, will be locking in behind Cunliffe and they'll have a, a larger say in who chooses mm. the leader. So, um, what are you seeing then, David? What are, you, what are your sources telling you? Well, look, what I'm seeing is a 
quite extraordinary destabilisation campaign for their annual conferences this weekend. This is normally your best chance for a great weekend of publicity because it's all your MPs talking about what the government's done wrong, their policies being released, etc. And people have chosen to go out there and not see how he does at conference and then if he doesn't do well say maybe we need a change. But you've seen half a dozen people come out over the last two days all saying, he must go, he must go now. That is a destabilisation campaign. As Cam said, I think they want him, he's a very decent man, and I think they want him to get so sick of this he'll just throw the towel in. But Labor knows, don't don't they, Cam, that that they would have a better chance with somebody else, either Robertson or Cunliffe or whoever. I'm not sure that they do if you you have a look at... At Robertson, if if he takes over the leadership, then very clearly the Labour Party and the caucus is signalling that the Labour Party has come now to represent the fact that they're the party workers' party rather than the workers' party. If you have uh, Cunliffe, then uh, you have, again, you've got a major problem there. Most of the caucus dislike David Cunliffe, although the activists out there, the more rabid left-wing activists out there, would see that as a, a massive lurch to the left and the increase in union power. Mm. And the, the, the sad reality of what we're seeing here is that the Labour Party is just so far out of touch with, with middle New Zealand that, that even in their leadership battles, they're, they're, they're stuck. Thank you. Got to go. Uh, Cameron Slater and David Farrer on the huddle. News Talk ZB, it's now 10 to 6.